I'm gonna try something a little dangerous. Well, risky. It's not dangerous, it's just risky. Uh, it might mean that my mealworm sifter it doesn't function when I'm done, as it was originally intended to. Uh, but let me walk through what I'm thinking, and you guys let me know if this is crazy. Uh, so the problem I am having, I'm trying to solve a problem. The problem I'm having is that on this end of the sifter, the intent of that roller right there is that the live mealworms cling onto it and roll underneath, and then there's a brush under there that they run into and they fall off. Uh, and then there's this little little guy there that what it's supposed to do is divert the pupa and dead that way and the live back in that way. The problem is it doesn't work. Uh, a lot, a lot of live moving mealworms end up down here. Uh, case in point. There you go. Like Those things are not pupating. There are some pupa in there that uh, because I sifted large, there there are pupa that are stressed, or there were larvae that were stressed and they pupated. But that shouldn't be happening. Um, that's too much. Uh, the other thing is that from a quality perspective, this thing wasn't built super fantastic. Uh, and so the, see those little brush guides in there along the roller? Uh, they aren't tight. Uh, there's a gap there in between the two, and so the mealworms get out. Uh, I've got a chain and a tensioner, and I could I could adjust that so that they're tighter. Um, but that's a modification, so that's one thing. Uh, and two, uh, that will just continue to be a problem. Um, and and so what's happening is because there's a gap there, and the, and the larva can get out. They fall down on the floor, right? And so I built this little moat just to keep them in, but I'm losing mealworms there, right? Um, so what I want to do, because I don't have an issue with dead mealworms, I mean, I have dead mealworms, I'm not going to lie. They happen, but not that many. Like, we can pick them out. Um, it's not uh, a huge number that warrants this needing to be done. Uh, and from a pupa perspective, I just put a mesh sifter up here and it catches the pupa before it even goes in. Because any pupa that are gonna go through this thing and vibrate and shake and get beat up aren't gonna be viable anyway. So I catch them before it goes in and th this thing's useless to me now. So what I wanna do instead, I wanna take it out. Uh, it's unnecessary, it's a part in there that if it breaks, I'm in trouble, right? If the controller breaks, if any of those rollers break, if the canvas breaks, it's a risk. Uh, and so what I want to do instead is I want to take it out. And so this cloth and the rollers will come out, that cloth and the rollers come out. And what will happen is over here, the mealworms come down through this top part here and end up back there. And there's this flip right here, right? This goes back and forth. So this, if you don't want to sift from a size perspective, you can flip that and then it just goes to the output and they all come out one location. So that's not going to work. I still need them to sift the sizes, right? And so what I want to do is replace, so there's a roller for the first cloth, right? What I want to do is I want to put a piece of metal that is below this and basically catches everything that comes off of this. And that piece of metal is going to be one long piece that just comes over to here and ends, so this thing comes off, that piece ends somewhere down in here so that the larva come down, land on the, the sifting uh, section here, and they go in and they, they go through their normal sorting of sizes. That's what I wanna do. Uh, my, my concern is that, so from that roller right there, over to this roller here, the, uh, that's approximately, what am I looking at? I think it was 50 inches. So four, four to four and a half feet uh, of drop or of, of span. And then the drop is only six inches. So my worry is like that section doesn't move. The moving section is the bottom sifting plate uh, and the top frass sifter. 
And so these are static, these two rows here where the cloth is connected. This doesn't move, this doesn't move. Um, now those, those rotate, right? Like the cloth rotates around, uh, but that can be disabled by taking the, the chain off uh, and just also turning it off. Uh, it has an independent control. Um, and then I can take these out and just like that stuff just comes out. The concern I have is running something from there down to here. Is that enough of a drop that the mealworms are going to fall? Or are they going to bulk up? Um, are they gonna build up and just not move without some sort of vibration or something? Uh, what I'm thinking of doing is having a piece of metal so that it's slippery, they can't climb on it. Uh, but even that is risky because like on the pupa sifter, uh, on the hopper, they can climb that. So I'm a little bit concerned about how do I get them to go from that, that over to here on just a plate of some kind. Uh, I was going to put some L channel or some, uh, U channel on the sides to give it rigidity and to give it a barrier, right? An edge so that they, they can't climb up and out. Uh, it's not just gonna be a flat piece of something. Uh, it needs to, to have, a, have a containment on the side. Um, so I'm not sure how that's gonna work. Uh, I wonder if, I, maybe the other option to get some more tilt is I just bypass the bypass and I put it up here. I could do that. That way I get more fall and yeah, so if I put it like right here, right, that's the edge of it and it goes over to the other side of this. This is where the output comes out uh, after the frass has been sifted out. I could put it there and that gets me more height. Uh, yeah, well, then I run into this thing. So I'm gonna have to go low enough. That may not be a big deal though. That angle might still, it still is more angle. And I could potentially, I could potentially put a, you know, it could go this way and then up a little bit to get above that diverter and basically catch everything and get some momentum of that slant going down and falling and then coming this way. I think that's what I'll do. Uh, before I take any of this apart though, I'm gonna label everything, uh, get everything labeled, um, and really only take off what I have to, which I think will be that, and that, in order to get the roller out. And then this roller is just held in by the force going that way. So that will just fall out. Same thing with the one on the other side, it'll just fall out. And then on the other side, uh, the chain might need to come off. Uh, I don't think the chain powers anything else, uh, but the switch will be off. So the chain can come out, the switch will be off, the motor won't be running, and that won't be a concern. Uh, and then I need to get some, I guess like sheet metal or aluminum. Aluminum would probably be better. Uh, just a flat sheet of that and some channel on the side. Uh, screw that together with some sheet metal screws uh, and mock it up. Uh, and probably do that after the major harvest for the week. We've been in a routine where we do one major harvest a week uh, and then harvest of other trays uh, the next day. So it'd be ideal to do it after that just in case any of this goes wrong and I have to rebuild it and test it back out. Uh, but yeah, I think that's what I'm gonna do. Um, I'm gonna ruminate on that a bit, and if you guys have any suggestions on on what to do there, let me know. Uh, but I think that's where I'm headed. Uh, while I have it open, I'm gonna go ahead and grease these guys, um, do some maintenance there. But uh, yeah, small improvement on the mealworm sifter. Otherwise, this thing is a beast, it's working great. Uh, I'm gonna make that adjustment so that when I move this, 
uh, it's going to move over here. I can butt it all the way up against that and not have these trays over here and stuff falling out and all this stuff underneath it. I don't want to have to rebuild the moat. Um, so that's the goal and we'll see how it goes.